Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today we are talking about fiction books with non-human narrators. So by this I mean that they are narrated by somebody that isn't a human but they are still a character in their own right in the book in whatever way and uh, a decent chunk of the book has been narrated by this particular character. Some of these are not fully narrated by that character um, but they, they have enough of a presence that I think it counts. And the, I'll explain more as we go along. But the first one of these that I wanted to recommend that is one of my all time favourite books and it's just such a fantastically weird read is The Bees by Leilani Poole. This is told from the point of view of a bee. Her name is Flora717 and it basically goes through the life cycle of a bee, the various different roles that they take on in the hive but it's told from the point of view of her. So you get to spend a load of time in Flora's head, you get to see the excitement of a wasp kind of invading the hive, the idea of going out on flights to try and find pollen, the, the work that she does kind of in the, the nursery with the queen bee, and um, it's the kind of thing that like it would seem like really weird trippy sci-fi if it weren't for the fact that this is like 100% biologically accurate and this is genuinely how a hive actually functions. So it's a really really fascinating look at insects, um, specifically bees obviously, um, but also with this wonderful kind of dramatization fictional fictionalization blah, 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 over the top <laughs> um it's the kind of book that if you like weird stuff you're definitely going to enjoy it but the one star and five star reviews on goodreads are essentially identical it's just people being like it's a story told from the point of view of a bee and if that doesn't really sound like it's going to be your cup of tea definitely don't touch it because it's a story told from the point of view of a bee and uh it's just the life of a bee and yeah, there's not really much more to say about it other than I adored it and wish I could go back in time and reread it fresh again. Another book that's a little bit weird but is more of a horror kind of vibe to it is White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. Now, there are several actual human narrators in this book but the one of the narrators is the haunted house that these humans occupy. Um, it's the only non-living thing I think as a narrator on this list and it's absolutely fascinating and really fun with how it plays around with it. I have such a hit and miss relationship with Helen Oyeyemi, most of her books really don't work for me but this one I absolutely adored and thought it was fascinating and freaky and creepy and it's about a girl who um, suffers from an eating disorder where she eats, I think it's drywall, chalk that's it she eats chalk um, and hears voices and there's kind of a long-running history of mental illness in her family connected with this house in some way it's about her brother trying to kind of get through to her and um try and work out what's happening but then also this house that's trying to basically capture her like it has so many of her other um women relatives in the past um naturally there are trigger warning trigger warnings for eating disorder and self-harm in this book but if that isn't something that is a problem for you this is incredible very freaky and really really good fun one that again is incredibly weird, let's face it, I think all the books on this list are going to be very weird because if you have a non-human narrator it's going to be a bit of a weird book. But one that I really enjoyed is 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. This is told from the point of view of a collection of dogs, 15 to be precise, and basically it is about two Greek gods having an argument in a pub one day about basically what is it about humans and how special they are, and one of the gods is like, no, 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 I'm sure if you gave dogs consciousness and sentience then they would be just as happy as humans. And uh, so that's what happens, they give 15 random dogs uh, kind of sentience and awareness, self-awareness, and it's about the dogs trying to kind of cope with that and the sense of them as a dog and their place in the world but then also they're kind of more dog-like instincts. Um, it's incredibly strange and really interesting. Um, it's not really what I was expecting from like a book told from the point of view of dogs. It's a lot darker than I was expecting it to be but it is a fascinating read and it's quite short so it's a fun one again if you like kind of quirky reads. One I finished more recently that was entertaining enough to justify its existence but not actually a great book full kind of caveat to this and that's Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. This is told from the point of view of a domesticated crow who is living through a zombie apocalypse where um, his owner has definitely been taken over by a zombie and uh, so is basically the rest of humanity and he goes on a bit of a mission to try and free the other domesticated animals and then help them find a place within the wild world that is taking over. The zombie trope is a little bit tired in this and the plot doesn't really go anywhere but I did enjoy the voice of the domesticated crow, I did like the idea of the conversation about like domestication versus wild and because the domestic crate domesticated crow has learned everything from his owner and his owner's a bit of a like beer guzzling kind of um thug jack the lad as such 
everything is kind of told through the point of view of sort of slang so people are actually called mofos as in like motherfuckers and there's a whole bunch of stuff um sort of funny witty asides that i found quite entertaining so like i say it's funny enough to justify its existence it doesn't really go anywhere so it's more of a bit of kind of a light fluff book and if you're a fan of zombie apocalypses this is entertaining but it's not really doing much new beyond obviously the trope of the domesticated crow. Veering now to the world of classics, Jack London is absolutely iconic for this kind of a book. So uh, one of his is The Call of the Wild, the other one is White Fang and both of them are told from the point of view of some kind of dog. So Call of the Wild is actually told from the point of view of a domesticated dog who ends up being involved in I think dog fighting rings and then ends up, both of them are set in like, um, I want to say like Alaska kind of area, basically like the gold rush and it's about people trying to desperately try and like go to these very arctic conditions and find gold and sort of the conditions for the dogs. White Fang is actually told from the point of view of a wolf that then ends up being domesticated so it's kind of the sort of this one's going from dog to wolf the other one's going from wolf to dog. Both of them were quite short and really sweet and I loved both of them as a kid. Um, I have reread both of them since they are definitely more aimed at kind of a younger audience but they are a really lovely read and I think both have been made into movies in various different ways and I really fab for that. You couldn't really do a video about non-human narrators without mentioning Black Beauty by Anne Selwell, I want to say. Um, this one is told from the point of view of a horse. It's in Industrial Revolution, Pre-Industrial Revolution, I want to say, something like that. Oh, my history is shaky today. And it was actually written to bring attention to the plight of workhorses who um, were work like... I would never say work like dogs, horses being work like dogs, that doesn't really make any sense, and then were sold to the knackers. But it is told from the point of view of Black Beauty, who is our glorious main horse narrator, and the various journeys he goes on, the various owners that he's had. I adored this book as a kid, I listened to it on audiobook so many times, there is also, there's probably many movies, but there's a movie out that is fantastic, and just generally I think it's a really, really wonderful, well-told story that will definitely make you feel for the plight of horses in whatever time period it was set in. Oh, so sketch on history today but yeah a great one and honorable mention to one that i haven't actually read yet but i definitely want to get to sometime on my shelf soon and that's watership down by richard adams this is kind of one of the other big ones that is sort of a classic and this is told from the point of view of a rabbit or a collection of rabbits and it's about them needing to leave their warren and find new home and apparently it's incredibly depressing and incredibly dark it might be an allegory for war i can't really remember and there was an animated uh, movie about this which I've seen only snippets of and again traumatizing with some of its scenes so yeah um that's an iconic one too and I will read it eventually so that is it from me do you have any other examples of books with non-human narrators do you enjoy this kind of thing do you find it maybe a bit alienating um I did have a bunch which were like robots but I didn't really think that that counted because it's kind of just like a sort of humanoid thing and isn't really aiming to be non-humanoid but if you'd like a video about robot books, do let me know. Uh, have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!